So this news comes out of Alulasat, Greenland. Alulasat. Which I've spent a lot of time. Oh, you have? Oh, that yeah. the ca- That's not the capital, is it? No, it's, Nook oh, is the capital. No. Alulasat's a little farther north. Mm. Okay. okay. And, uh, it's the worst it, weather. Yeah. Yes, but amazing <laughs> okay. access to um, Northern like, like the fjords around there. Okay. And a lot of islands that are very cool. What's a fjord? No, you're joking. I swear to God. No, fjord? come on. Wait, stop, stop, Kyle. No, no, Don't no. look it up. What is a fjord? Guess. A fjord, Take three guesses. All right. Uh, a fjord is like a uh, a farm in winter. No. No. A f- in, let's a try two more. A fjord is a winery in winter. <laughs> <laughs> no. A f- okay, wait, back. stop. Third, we're going to give you a clue give me before a clue. number three. It's a geographical anomaly. A fjord is a valley in winter. <laughs> Closer. How would you describe a fjord? A fjord is a, uh, I guess I don't know, but <laughs> it's an area of water with a bunch with of like islands and the water jagged and mountains thing, sticking out of it. That's a fjord. Listen, yeah, I guarantee exactly. a valley with water in the bottom. That's yeah. that's I I really honestly that's the first thing I've learned on this podcast in a whole <laughs> while. Oh, so Kyle, pull up a picture here of Jacob Chauvin. Ice Fjord. Yeah. Jacob Chauvin. And That'll you get up. one crack at spelling that correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, why are they like that? So, yeah, click on like one of the good pics. So, tell us about Jacob Chauvin. So, you go to Alulasat to, to see Jacob Chauvin, which is just like well, f- this unbelievably impressive um, glacier. Y- yeah. Well, Fjord, it's an Fjords ice fjord, are, really. Are cl- carved by glaciers, right? I would think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a fjord is created by a glacier. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that's how fjords are made. Anyway, ah, but, that makes sense. Yeah, so so basically you go, I've, I've been on that rock, oh, you just wow. look out and there's just icebergs. And you, Stunning. During the summer, when that's most really people incredible. visit Greenland, they're, they're calving. Mm-hmm. The gla- the ice fjords are yeah. and the, the icebergs. Yeah, so, so you just breaking see off. massive icebergs. Giant splashes, the whole Huge thing. Huge waves yeah, come amazing. in. Amazing. It's a very cool place. But so anyway. wait, let me just real quick before you move on that from that. Like, so I'm picturing you kind of sit there, it's completely silent, and you just hear the icebergs start cracking. <sighs> yeah, and then yeah. you kind of look to find it and then you see it fall oh, in. That sounds incredible. Wait, he cool. still hasn't got to the news part of this news. Story. I know. I'm just interested. It's a great, He's yeah. it's a a great place. I will also say near Jacob Chauvin Ice Fjord, um, there's probably just like a, I don't know, 10,000 acre area of just these rolling sort of tundra covered fun climby rock hills. Oh, cool. And you just cruise out for a hike, man. I would like every couple of days put my headphones in and just walk. Oh, wow. And you're just like climbing up shit. Nice. And you're like, oh, I can't get down this way. And you go back down, you go another way. It's really, really fun. <laughs> nice. and you're cool an explorer. Place. I used to be. <laughs> but in Alulasat, Greenland, local hunters, so they hunt seal, mm-hmm. right? And they, they use, eat it. Yeah. Th- they eat it, but they mostly feed it uh, to their dogs, their sled dogs. Oh, okay. So it's, you know, a super high fat content. For sure. And so they'll hunt seal and use that to feed their sled dogs throughout the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, hunters that were cruising around on a boat discovered a new species of seal oh, oh wow cool. we got octopus we got seal wow it's a new it's species a new species special. kind of day yeah. yeah what are you seeing there for so oh, it's, it's a, a ring seal, seal. yeah mm-hmm. beautiful so i think ring seals are amongst the most beautiful seals there are um so i mean i haven't seen this but yeah as you said found in iceland new species what makes it different from the other ring seals well they so they purported that they found this seal. Okay. And then researchers, um, Greenlandic and Danish researchers went out mm. and their um, study was just published in uh, the Journal of Molecular Ecology. Okay. So, so this, they did do it on a molecular level. Yeah. So we know that its DNA is different. That's right. So okay. the can, Kangia, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Kangia seals have been genetically isolated from their Arctic counterparts for over 100,000 years. Oh, oh wow. I see. Um, and, it, and it says here that they, they're they um, characterized by larger size and different fur color and pattern compared to the common Arctic ring seal. Because I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's a ring seal. But obviously the patterning is slightly different. I don't know Arctic seals all that well. Yeah. But um, I got you. I mean, they are beautiful creatures, aren't they? Well, tell us a little bit about the uh, the ring seal. I'm sure that this has lots in common with it. Yeah, I mean, it's it just, is. I think a, a type of ring seal. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it's a subspecies. Um, are they just? Are they? How well, are no, they it's a new species, I guess, genetically. So, how are they different? I don't know. Obviously, okay. what's happened here? Hundred thousand years is not a lot of time. It sounds like a lot of time to us, but yeah. for evo- in an evolutionary time, that's not a lot of time. Okay. So they've been isolated for a hundred thousand years, meaning for a hundred thousand years, these two different populations, the 
Arctic ring sealed and this new Greenlandic ring sealed, whatever it's called, yeah. uh, have been apart, right? Mm -hmm. So now, over that time, they've started to genetically drift, and they will likely morphologically drift a little bit too, meaning they will change a little bit, hence the larger patterns and the bigger rings and blah, blah, right, blah. Right, right. In another 500,000 years, they won't look at all similar, right? So it's like this is early evolution, right? So now researchers, hunters, they've gone, oh, check it out. These seals look a little bit different. Something's up. Right. I don't think it is the same species. Let's bop one on the head and grab a fur sample and take some DNA and figure it out. Now we do them side by side. Oh, we're right. It is actually a different species. If you were to fast forward in time, half a million years, a million years, one of them would be 20 feet long and one would be five foot long and one would have a pink nose and one would have a green nose. You know what I mean? They'd change. Yeah. Right. But because they've only had 100,000 years to change, they still look very, very similar, and they probably do pretty much all the same things. Mm. They're just isolated. So they're, they're at the early stage of evolving into their own species, basically. So is a ring seal any different than just like uh, a ring seal obviously has – it looks like longer fur than a regular seal. And the fur is, – is that does the pattern on their fur have anything to do with their environment, or what, what, what's up with that? Uh, I don't know. It's probably some kind of camouflage. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they what hang out on ice drifts a lot, you know? Yeah. So maybe it makes them a little harder to see for polar bears or yeah, yeah, who knows? Because sure. they, are, they are essentially just a fat meat sack <laughs> well, with a uh, tiny, cute head that you want to kiss. <laughs> totally. Well, all, all those are, I mean, you know, like what makes them different from another seal? I mean, every seal has its own behavior, own morphology, own yeah. social structure. You know, it's just another type of It's like of dogs. Seal yeah. Different exactly. species. But it's breed. cool. It's It's, you know... The only way we discover new large species in today's world, for the most part, is by something like this. It's not like, oh, let's go on an expedition to a jungle and we found a new 500-pound animal, right? Sure. It doesn't really work that way. This <laughs> right. is how we're finding the new 500-pound animals. 